show that in fact inside here is hidden a little piece of paper in microscopic print that says you are a winner of $10 million if your name is chosen on April 30th, 2010. Because you know what Clearinghouse, Publishers Clearinghouse does. They hook you with this big, you know. You have done what a biblicist would call is an exegesis of the text. In spite of what it says, you have correctly interpreted it. She has read what it says correctly and has misinterpreted it. Why? Because she does not understand the cultural context that produced this four by nine inch piece of literature. Let me give you an example from classical antiquity. In ancient Greece and Rome, they were very big on dramas. They loved going to plays. One of the rules of Greek and Latin drama is that if the actor exits stage right, he's going to the forum. If he leaves stage left, it means he's going to the country. All Greco-Roman citizens at the time of Christ and probably 100, 200 years before and certainly up until the time of Augustine, 400 years after, knows this. If you're from Mars and you land in the, the, the Acropolis of Athens to watch a play and you don't know this little cultural default of Greco-Roman culture, and something in the plot depends on the actor being in the forum, and you're scratching, how the heck did he get to the forum? I mean, that wasn't in the play anywhere, because you don't get that exiting stage right means he's going to the forum. You will misunderstand the play. Everyone in the culture already knows that. This is, so we're going to look at a, an artifact, a literary artifact, if you want to talk about it in a very secular kind of terms, this book of Revelation, is a product of Hellenistic culture. It comes from a particular culture in the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea from around the year 100. It's written in a language that no one speaks anymore. It, like all of the New Testament, the Christian scriptures, is written not only in Greek, but it's a very particular kind of Greek that begins, we know exactly when it begins, at the time of Aristotle, around the year 300, and that Greek is called Koine. It's not the Greek of classical Athens of the year 400 BC. This is a new kind of Greek that Alexander's armies brought with them and remains the dominant language of the Eastern Mediterranean until Byzantine Greek takes over around the year 600 AD. The book of Revelation is not written in English. It is written in Greek. So there are all kinds of linguistic contexts that if you know the language, then you don't need a translation. Not knowing the language, we need a translation. Let me give you a quick example of this. I was in Chicago at a, a Dominix. I was like IGA or, or Kroger. I'm the cook at our friary. Oh. <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> They're pretty big friars, though. <laughs> um, so I'm buying groceries. And yeah, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> the cookie jar, I live with two of them. <laughs> so I'm buying groceries, and this one woman is telling the checkout lady is telling her co-worker on the aisle behind her, I was at Costco yesterday, would you believe that they have coffins? They sell coffins in Costco. And in fact, I too had been in Costco, and it was shocked in Chicago. They do sell coffins. Really, it's so bizarre. As you exit the store, yeah, it's kind of mock morbid. Good deal, though. I mean, they're really <laughs> so, so I, so I heard this, and I said to the woman, that's true, I saw them. I mean, I actually saw there like four of them where they had the big corners of the box. And this woman checked me out looks and she goes, shut up. <laughs> now at face value, it's like, why? I mean, why would she tell me? But knowing English the way we do certainly Chicago urban English, you would know she's not really telling me to shut up. She's saying, oh my God, I can't believe that, really. <laughs> but her way of saying it is, shut up. She said it twice. I said, well, no, but really, they're there. Shut up, she's saying to me. If you don't know this linguistic cultural thing of the year 2009, maybe a particular neighborhood of Chicago, you're gonna, I would, this woman's is kind of offensive, unless you know that. So I depend. I depend on the truth of this in order to correctly interpret the text that we're going to look at. Okay, so that's my premise. And that's what I'm going to do tonight, is to provide the context, not a decoding of the book. And you'll see how completely useless this approach 
makes decoding of the book. By decoding, I think some of you know what I mean. Looking at all the details and adding up the years and figuring out when the end is coming and all of that kind of stuff, my opinion as an academic <coughs> is that that's a complete misunderstanding of the text. It is a misreading of the intent of the author. It is a misreading of what the author is trying to communicate. And my problem with this is, as our heads are down, staring at the little details, and our little decoding page is over here, we're trying to decode the future, we're actually missing the bigger, more important point of the book. So worried about the second coming of Christ and not being raptured or being raptured, that we actually miss, I think, the fundamental point of the book. So, those are my biases. Now, let me say to I'm obviously a Roman Catholic, I dress funny, I'm this uh, Franciscan, and my training is absolutely Roman Catholic. I'm, I'm, I'm as Roman Catholic as you can get, Irish and all of that stuff. So I'm trained in the Vatican's biblical school, biblical university, the Pontifical Biblical Institute. I have my doctorate from the Pope's university, so I'm really Catholic. That's what I know. But I also believe that academically, the approach taken by Roman Catholic scholarship is a middle-of-the-road approach. So that while I can't step out of myself and act like I'm not a Roman Catholic trained biblicist, what I present for you is a middle-of-the-road academic approach to the text. This is not just a Catholic priest giving Catholic propaganda so I can convert you all and get the toaster ovens. It's not that. It's not that. This is, and I, and I, I took a lot of my biblical studies from the Presbyterian Seminary in Chicago, and I've done a lot of study with Anglicans as well in biblical studies. And I know that most of the mainstream Protestant Reformed traditions share this approach as well. And on that note, I want to present two books before I go any further, because I think they are absolutely on the money.